Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. It's episode 116. Happy holidays. Uh, Today's December 24th, 2018. And you are listening to, or maybe even watching, Human Factors Cast. We are here for the holidays to uh, break down all the news stories of the year with you. And to do it, I couldn't do it alone. I'm joined today by Mr. Blake Arnstorff. Howdy, howdy, guys. I don't know if I said it, but I'm your host, Nick Rome. So welcome to Human Factors Cast. This is our sort of annual tradition, Blake, of uh, today on the show, we're going to be basically breaking down all of the news stories of 2018, as well as taking a look at our 28 predictions and seeing how... Our 28 predictions. That was a lot. 2018 predictions. Did I say 28? You may have. Uh, anyway, 2018 predictions. We're going to see how wrong or right we were. Oh, goodness, yeah. Last year, Nick know. was super right. This year, I'm scared. I, I don't know. Should we like? Should we keep score? <laughs> we I think we have to. Think All right. Okay. So so these are going to sound real dumb in hindsight. And, you know, yep. I don't know. Uh, so anyway... Uh, welcome. We're not going to go over anything special. This is just a. This is just us hanging out. Uh, consider it. You know, you'll be, you'll be bringing Human Factors Cast home for the holidays, if you will. This is our holiday special. Uh, like uh, you know, we're going to have some Life Day Wookies in here uh, a little bit later. Thank goodness I got to use a gorilla hug. <laughs> All right, so we we got a lot of news to get to. So why don't we just jump into <laughs> our uh, 2018 predictions here? So much more than usual. I um, you know, I don't really even have a sounder for this. You know what? Maybe I'll just use the infinite music, right? Like, oh hey, here's our 2018 predictions. Check this out. That's yeah, here bad. you go. Yeah. Uh, all right, Blake. Well, why don't we get into it? So you um, can go ahead and talk through your stuff. Oh my goodness. Your this main is not point. Good. Yeah, your main point, and then uh, your description, and then we'll kind of talk about it. Yeah. So I had something called Omnichannel UX. You know, I had to have stolen that from somewhere. Where, yeah, so what there, is that? There will be a shift from focusing on mobile to VOI, so voice interaction and VR engagement within a person's surrounding environment. And I predicted that Facebook will launch a major platform to make social interactions immersive through connected devices. Well, they may have been slotted to do that earlier in the year, but they had to deal with, you know, lawsuits. Yeah, Facebook kind of had a really they rough had a year. Tough year. <laughs> had a tough year, but they did launch some stuff with like Oculus and whatnot. I know voice UIs have gotten super popular, but it's still something that's growing. It's not at the point where it, it's ubiquitous with, you know, how we interact socially. Um, so that was kind of a stretch. Yeah. But still. Not bad. Hang on. Let me let me jump into my first prediction here. We'll just go back and forth. Uh, so I said that major legislation will be passed to outline reg- regulations for human brain interfaces. Finally. <laughs> major highlights are no active stimulation, only passive signal detection. No legislature was passed, to my knowledge, not with this administration, at least. Not in the States. <laughs> and now, we don't know worldwide if there's been HBI stuff going on that's legislatively driven, but I don't know. I haven't really heard too much HBI related over the past year. Yeah. We've ta- we've had a lot of, you know, we'll talk about the stories, but we've had a lot of, like, more in the medical field, what an HBI could do, could yeah, be used for. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but in terms of getting them implanted in our heads, we haven't done that yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, I kind of okay. want to jump to my last one, but I won't. No, get uh, you know what? It fits. Why don't we get into the last it one does. and then we jump back? Yeah. So Neuralink. So we will see the first fully functioning Neuralink prototype <laughs> in 2018. Wow. Oh God, we were really supposed to too. That's bold. the worst part. So an added feature of Neuralink is a new type of software encryption to prevent cyber attacks from the mind and, <laughs> and from AI and otherwise. Hold up. So, so really quick, Neuralink. What is that? So ah, goodness, I'm pretty sure I might get this wrong, but basically it was something to help you almost increase the memory in your brain, right? So give you a fighting chance to in, interact with stuff and be able to, you know, take on more information at a faster rate. Yeah, so it's uh, it's it's high bandwidth and safe human brain interfaces is what yeah. the thing is, yeah. But that ha- that didn't come out into the marketplace yet. Nothing. Or anything fully functioning. Now, I'm no. pretty sure it was supposed to have done something this year, but we're almost at the end and nothing's happened. Um. So obviously that second part, there's really nothing happened in that regard either because that was more of like, oh, well, if you're going to put something out, you have to have protective measures, right? Yeah. Okay, right. so this is Elon Musk's company. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. And so I've heard at least twice and seen it on Twitter over the past, like, three months that there was supposed to be something fully functioning coming out. But we're almost at the end. We, yeah. All right, so let's see here. My, my next prediction here was VR as a service, beginning with in-home PlayStation 
VR ti- <laughs> trials, we will see a monthly subscription service to attend VR events. Now, we talked a little bit about not necessarily this, but there was like some VR systems or at least games that came out that were supposed to be more like social event based. Yeah. So I'm going to count this as a partial win. Of course you are. Uh, okay. No, hold on. Here's my reasoning. So PlayStation Plus, that's the subscription service that you get for like... Um, Is that the online one? That's the, yeah, that's the, what you pay for. You get a couple free games oh, every, okay. yeah, yeah. every month. I think they're... It didn't happen in 2018, so I can't count it as a win, but I think they're slowly moving towards potentially giving a free v- PSVR title with Ooh, that's a every month. smart business move. So so next year, maybe maybe that's that's what's up the pipeline there. In the pipe. Yeah. Cryptocurrency, Blake? Cryptocurrency. Oh, man, I had such high hope for this. <laughs> so the value and utility of cryptocurrency will replace traditional marketplace cash <laughs> transactions. <laughs> we pay for groceries with cryptocurrency. Now, technically, you can do that. Te- okay, all right. Technically, you can pay for groceries with Bitcoin, okay, but it didn't, it didn't like have as much of an impact, and I think I think there was just, what do you call it, like too much growth too quickly, and then people cashed out of the market. Yeah, I definitely sold all my Bitcoin this year Yeah, um, because so of that, that bubble. Th- yeah, that just didn't work out from an economic standpoint. Now, you can do the other half of this, but in terms of it taking over traditional marketplace cash, didn't happen in 2018. No, no. All right, so, I mean... How naive were we at the beginning of 2018? I like to live in the future. <laughs> Me too. Uh, in fact, this is evidenced by my next sort of uh, prediction here. We will see the introduction of yet another add-on item for the criminal justice system, the drone cam, that gets a 360 aerial view of confrontations to put police officers in context. So there was a lot of uh, sort of talk about drone cams and the sort of situation around um you know these context-dependent interactions with uh, with individuals, right? So the police would come up to the scene; they would choose when to turn on their body cam, and that context of the situation is not always uh, taken into account, right? Because if you had this 3D drone cam, it would be hovering above, and then in a in a context like a courtroom, anyone could watch from um, a third person, uh, almost omniscient perspective what's going on yeah you're not like getting a biased story of when the camera was turned on type of thing right uh so that was kind of my hope but that did not happen not yet not yet Uh, although we talk a little bit about and this will be one of the first stories about the smart city stuff being applied so i mean that's kind of in that architecture so it's not exactly the same but i I think there's some sure pretty close yeah i i yeah so we have the smart cities right like putting uh cameras on lamp posts and all that stuff so Kind of. Yeah, but that, then again, it's not for your application, right, that it would be used in a cri- in the criminal justice system. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a partial win. Partial win. Partial win. Um, what else you got? We will see an app of apps type service for major streaming services that integrates Hulu, Netflix, HBO, Showtime, CBS On Demand, etc. More services will follow. Nope. Maybe I don't understand this. Doesn't... Well, okay, for Hulu and Netflix, is it, this isn't the case. But I know Amazon Prime covers all the other ones you've mentioned. Yes, I don't know if that's necessarily. Is that not what you? That's not what you were talking about, obviously. So, what do you? What were you trying to get at? Basically, sort of an app that um, what app integrates Google? like everything, right? So you can you can see like all of your recommendations from all the services that you're signed up for. Oh, and okay. Like like uh, there's no differentiation you could see the handmaid's tale right next to stranger things in your thing i surprised nobody's done that yeah me too maybe it's out there we just don't know but that that is a great kind of idea right I, and i mean like you would basically share your login the the downside to these services is that um you're no longer getting dedicated use on these applications it's true so i i don't know i i still have high hopes for something like that in the future and I've since moved to Plex, which... Yeah, I was about to say, that's not, it's close, not, but not really it's the same not thing. really, because you're looking at your saved media. Like, if I have a, a DVD Blu-ray, I can uh, burn it and save it to my device and put it on my Plex server, and I could see those things, but I have to own them to uh, do something like gotcha. that. Or not. There are other ways. But uh, anyway, so the last one I had here was Elon Musk and Tesla will purchase another WTF company and present plans for an out-there idea. And I said, I'm calling it now. 
Musk will is getting into nano robotics to mask our senses for virtual experiences. Did he purchase another company this year, or did he start something else? I don't know. Musk has had a really tumultuous year too. Oh yeah, <laughs> he did. Musk and Facebook. How how uh, how how times have changed. Of course, he went down and then rose right back up. Facebook's still having a hard time. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, those were our 2018 predictions. Uh, next episode, we will be coming up with our 2019 predictions. Yeah, we'll see if we can get them more on the nose this year. Yeah, we're definitely hoping so. And, and you know, after reflecting on all the stories this year, I, I hope that we're going to kind of... Um, what planet was I living on with mine? I don't know, I was man. way out there on the moon. We were, yeah, I think... I think when we thought of these, we were very much like, well, let's let's think about what our hopes and dreams are. Let's and go for they, it. Uh, they all got crushed. Anyway, Blake, you know what time it is. Uh, yeah, it's time for... It's time for Human Factors News. We're breaking down the entire year. One year of news. Yeah, one year of news. So the way we'll handle this is we'll kind of go back and forth, and if there's anything interesting, we'll kind of just uh, jump in and talk about it. Um... So, actually, we had a couple stories from December last year that we did not cover in our annual uh, sort of review. So, uh, the first one here is, what have people been Googling in 2017? <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is this is interesting for a variety of reasons because... Um, a variety of them. Yeah, it's kind of fun to see where we were at last year. So, fidget spinners were really big. That was number 10. Hurricane uh, Irma. Hurricane uh, Irma was number one. Matt Lauer, Tom Petty, the Super Bowl, Las Vegas shooting. Oh, Tom Petty. It's, uh, it's kind of shocking to think that all these things happened last year. Um, solar Eclipse, Mayweather versus McGregor fight. Oh, don't bring it back. Hurricane Harvey, Aaron Hernandez. Wow. All right. How far we've come. Yeah. What's the next one? Year. So Cali Burger's new kiosk uses facial recognition to take orders. Man, I still need to go to this place in Pasadena, I think it was, where it was basically yeah. a TV screen that is taking your order via your face. You know, if they could remember my order every time I walked in there based on my face, I would totally just, let them take a yeah. picture and do it. Just order it. Yes. You walk in, boom. I love burgers. Uh, new York will tackle unfair biases in automated city services. Ooh. I don't remember that one. I don't either. But that sounds like a great thing to have done. Yeah. Uh, they talk about algorithms and biases. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if they actually followed through with it. Maybe maybe it's later. Yeah, uh, we should follow up in 2018. Yeah. Now we're in January. All right. So Amazon patent descri oh, describes mirror for trying on virtual clothes. Hey. I have actually started doing this. This happened. Yeah, it's great. No, I've never done this in my life. No, but they, it seems like an awesome idea, and I think they did fall through with it. They certainly did with the clothing line. Yeah, I don't know if it was this year or uh, last year where they introduced the uh, Echo Show, where they. Um, Ooh, what is this? It's like a runway? No, it's like the the little uh, the screen where you can see. Oh stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if this is implemented now. Uh, hey, January eighth. Um, the first mind control VR game will hit arcades in 2018. Did it? I don't know. Neuralink. <laughs> Hang on. I have to see if it did because this is um Oh, this is from IEEE, my favorite. Oh yeah. Hang on. Let's Except see here. IEEE. Right uh this was uh jacked in. Um Neurable's new virtual reality and Neurable. Yeah, was that? Yeah, what that the? that's the company I remember reading a lot about last year. Neurable. I I don't know if this actually came to fruition. It's interesting. Uh anyway. I don't think so. I don't think it's controlling your mind. Hey, there's still uh what, 6 days left? Oh, my goodness. So San Diego installs smart street lights oh, to hey. monitor the metropolis. Hey, yeah. there's Nick's thing. Yeah, we just kind of talked about that. Now, this... I this haven't really, seen them. Yeah, this, I haven't seen them. I haven't heard about them in the news anymore. Like, I don't know if they're even really doing what they're supposed to do, but supposedly they were out there in San Diego. I know San Diego's pushing hard for smart city implementations. So right. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think we talk a little bit more about that in San Diego throughout the year. Yeah. Um... Potentially. All right. So January 10, we have uh, AAA is testing self-driving cars to see how safe they are. Oh, is this before we start having problems with self-driving cars this year? Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. For sure. Interesting that AAA was the ones to start first. Haven't heard anything about them doing it since. No. I'd love to know if they, had, if they were trying to do, you know, automated tow vehicles and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. Epic. What's up next? All right. The Fit 360 is a 360 degree camcorder you wear around your neck. Okay. I've seen this and this thing is awesome. Okay, wh ha where have you seen it? So I've seen it from a guy named Harry Main. He's a English like BMX and mountain bike rider, and it actually does take a really well done three hundred and sixty degree camera view of you like riding. I think I actually may have seen this. Um, how do you spell his name? Uh, Harry Main. 
So Harry and then M A I N. Okay. Uh, I, I think this is even the name of the the company that did it. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I I'm pretty sure I've seen um, some video like this. I couldn't identify it if I was looking for it. It looked really wacky to me. I mean, because it, it's literally like a 360 degree view. But it it's it almost see, from the video it takes it seems like it's very seamless. Now I'm sure it's cumbersome to wear because it's like a neck thing. Yeah. Uh, what's a, am I on deck or you? Yeah, on you're on deck, man. Am I this one? No, I'm this you're one. You're on the FDA. The FDA approves a crisis predicting algorithm to save hospital patients from early death. Wow, that's amazing. I had forgotten about that one. This was yeah. really a great year for algorithms in the medical community. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I'm sure we'll see a couple other examples, but this was interesting because it was the first algorithm that uh, was... Um, wasn't this the first algorithm? I, I felt like there was a first... It's the first algorithm ever. Yeah. Well, the first uh, FDA-approved algorithm. Yep. Um, but yeah, that was, that was interesting. So th- it was the sudden patient death, right, that that uh happened without like oh that's right right it was like predicting what was going to happen or how could you like collect enough information to start marking predictors of when death was going to happen depending on like cardiac or any of that kind of stuff right it was the sudden death one it's very cool all right you're up oh man i remember this one there were some weird ones so presenting the best of ces 2018 winners this is another thing i would want to go to oh i would love to go to such amazing accessibility tech as the Xeno E skin pajamas. Oh, the pajamas. Things like the be- black box VR. What was that? I do not remember. It was the gym oh, of the, the future. Gym, man! I really wanted to get into this. I would love to have that yeah. in the studio. Be doing like deadlifts during the uh, during the show or whatever in VR. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. That's an interesting kind of products. There, the one thing that I remember looking at was this new thing by Toyota. It was supposed to be like this innovative e palette. Right for like driving and hauling and oh, ride yeah. sharing, but yeah, I don't know if they've been deployed anywhere. It was again like a proof of concept type of thing. Sure. We also that's where we saw the uh, HTC Vive Pro. This was the more advanced version of the HTC Vive, uh, and they also introduced a couple like uh, accessories for it, like a battery pack, so that way you could do it wirelessly and everything. Um, we also saw the Smart City from this one as well, with the uh, cameras and everything on the um, on the streetlights. Oh, that's right, because these were those Intel Intelli yeah. platforms integrated streetlights. Those things look so scary. If I saw that, like, standing under a streetlight, I'd be yeah. terrified. Lots of cool stuff coming out of that one. Hey, you know what was also in January of this year? I can't believe that was this year. No, still. that was not this year. Yeah, it was. The, wow. The emergency alert in Hawaii claims missile inbound, and due to bad UI, uh, they accidentally sent out an emergency alert. I'm sure everyone in Hawaii was... Um, was freaked out about this. Man, Hawaii's had a really rough year, too. They've had this a tough has just one. been a rough year for everyone. Yep, it's not Except for fun. Human Factors Cast. We've had a pretty good year. Yeah, Human Factors <laughs> Cast is on the up and up. We're um, in 2019 is looking just as good. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, this was uh, that, that uh, false alarm um, emergency management uh, broadcast. So that was, yeah, yeah we had, <laughs> there was a lot of talk about that in the Human Factors community for sure. Yeah, we certainly did. This one was kind of a strange one as well on the 16th of January. So AI used to sell you more stuff can now read you better than a human. So basically it's kind of like targeted ad advertisements using AI. Um, This seemed pretty insane to me. I mean, honestly, just really (laughs) gathering all sorts of shopping habits and data and kind of using it to more better target what they're selling you. And I think this was used both by Microsoft and Alibaba to really start outsourcing how you can you know, get people to actually buy more stuff. The future is now, or back in January. Uh, <laughs> the future was now. The future was now. It no uh, longer is anymore. <laughs> hey, check out this AI system. It predicts how long patients will live with startling accuracy. And this is different from that other algorithm, because that was looking for predictors. This one is predicting how long patients will live. And so this was a great year for medical algorithms. It was. It's yeah. the year of the medical algorithm. As they say. Yeah, check that out. So apparently I forgot this one, and it's seeing the pictures bringing it back a little bit. So a drone saved the life of two teenage boys this year in Australia. Is that where they dropped the life vest in the water? Yep, that's exactly what it is. So it looks like they got a life vest that's dropped from a rescue drone. Um, 
And yeah, it looks like they may have been like drowning or having something going on in the water for sure. But that's insane. I mean, to think of all the things that we've talked about with drones over the past year, as far as like privacy concerns and putting ethics together. I mean, this is a drone that's saving lives. It's, it's been a cool. great year for drones. Speaking drones. of drones, Apple <laughs> revamps the App Store. Okay. Uh, what's up? That's here? great. <laughs> yeah. Apple Health that is being used in a murder trial. That's what happened. That was kind of cool. That was really interesting. Um, so this was the uh, rape and murder. Um, and uh, if you have sensitive ears, I'm sorry, but uh, th- they were basically using health data from the refugee's iPhone uh, for for proof of murder, uh, which was really interesting. That you know th- this data that. You know, so take off your Fitbit before you kill anyone, I guess. Yeah, jeez. Scary stuff. Uh, oh, it's my turn. It uh, is your hey, turn. Glasses, you glasses could prevent motion sickness in self-driving cars. Um, so that was that was kind of cool. It was like these, uh, basically as you were looking down, there are these ambient uh, patterns in your peripheral that basically kind of convey movement so that way you don't get motion sick while you're looking away from the horizon or you don't have the horizon in your peripheral. It's still... Per- presenting that information to you cool stuff so amazon go the high-tech version of 7-eleven will finally open on monday have well, you been to one of these i have it and i really want to go because it sounds great i've been to the amazon bookstore but i haven't been to the actual like kind of grab and go store where you can grab stuff like you would at 7-eleven and just walk on out but awesome idea i wonder how it's done over the year yeah i i'm pretty sure it's met with success um hey r hey hey r vr <laughs> Helps U.S. Olympic ski and snowboard snow, snowboard 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 teams prep for South Korea. So this was uh, this was cool because they got to use virtual reality to train and simulate how um, the tracks look like in in Korea. So uh, very interesting for sure. That was such a cool concept. And then we also got Ford that was filing for patents for autonomous RoboCop cars that learned how to hide from other drivers. Oh boy! So oh man, another like smart car invention made for you know policing the world so that was that was an interesting patent by Ford. they did a lot this year if i remember right regarding autonomous vehicles yeah. haven't heard so much in the past couple of months yeah ford has done a lot this year too it's been a great year for ford we're just that's that's the meme of the show ford. uh hey do you remember this strava oh man yeah. that happened this year uh, i forgot about that i guess like facebook covered that up nicely for them yeah so um the fitness app uh basically anonymized the data right but because there were military personnel using these on military bases that aggregated data, even though it wasn't personalized, still revealed the location of these military bases. Uh, location, location, location. Yeah, that was that was a big uh, that was a big topic of conversation as well in the human factors field. I feel like didn't I feel like that came up a couple times in H- at HFES as well. Yeah, you know, I think you're right that the problem of locating people based off a of data transmission. Yeah. So this one I don't necessarily remember, but it looks like London got a upgraded air traffic control tower 80 miles away from all the planes. Oh, that's right. So I remember talking about that and thinking it was strange at the time, but I I want I kind of looking back on it now, it seems sensible, I think, because based on, you know, if you've ever flown into Heathrow before, I mean, it's a pretty crowded little place. So having to put it, like, far away, you can still get the same things done. The only thing you wouldn't just have visibility of the runway, but that was a pretty interesting That could be accomplished with cameras, though. It could, yeah. yeah. Drones, even. Drones. Ooh. Uh, Hey, we have immersive uh, inverse Inverse's groundbreaking mixed reality renders you inside of VR. Thank goodness. Am I there yet? Yeah, I don't know. This one was uh, this was basically uh, rendering your arms and legs if you were to look down in VR and see yourself in that virtual environment. So you would be your own avatar, basically. So, so one other further way of defining immersion. Epic. So this is something I've forgotten about and wish that I had paid more attention to, especially since we were flying from Philadelphia over HFES. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Google's using AI to predict flight delays. So I've used Google Flights all the time to, like, pick the better price or whatever, but I have I didn't realize I could actually predict when delays were going to occur, when they might be likely. So that's awesome. Yeah, this is one that I kind of read and forgot about, um, but I think the whole controversy around this was that, you know, they, they're predicting delays before they actually occurred. Yeah, for, like, the company's able to release the information to all its kind right. of, you know, constituents and stuff like that. So there was some weird stuff there. Yeah, let's see here. Should data scientists adhere to a Hippocratic Oath? So that was an interesting uh, article from Wired. Uh, this is our first article of February. Um, 
We did talk a lot about ethics this year. Yeah, we talked a lot about ethics from on like, the show. But from all the way from like data to the design of AI to like what we talked about today with the Dragonfly Project. Yeah, or last week. Last no, week. Two weeks ago. That was ten two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Whoa, I can't believe time. that Dragonfly project was already two weeks ago. That's intense. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, man. So Disney finally has begun populating its park with the autonomous personality-driven robots. Now, you know, Nick, <coughs> I went to Disney not too long ago, and I don't remember seeing these. Yeah, you know why? They're going to be Did debuted go in Star Wars land. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm stoked for that. Yeah. Although I'll never get to go until like 10 years later. So these were actually like uh, limited run tests that they were doing with droids uh, in Tomorrowland. So they actually sent out droids with personalities, right? Now they're going to be kind of driving around uh, Galaxy's Edge, which is really exciting. Epic. Uh, All 71 on Crash Russian Plane are killed. Oh, that's sad. Uh, I forget which one this one was, but it was a bad year for planes. Uh (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it, it was not good for uh, you know flying in general. Oof, there was yeah, there was a lot of bad plane stuff. We got the Seattle guy. We got the uh, got the guy that the like Boeing shot the. Oh yeah, we got the guy who fell asleep. We got the Boeing engine. Yeah, there's a lot bad year for aviation. But it was a good year for Olympic training, and Samsung Smart Suit was here to help short track skaters train for the Winter Olympics. So that's kind of that's similar to what we were talking about earlier. I mean with using technology to enhance people's ability to train for sports in general. In this case, it was more for short track training versus like what we talked about with the snow. Yeah. Google uh, did a big push on ad blocking and I'm still using ad block plus. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So smart glasses from Eastside are changing blind people's lives by enabling them to see. So this was an awesome article. I think, Oh yeah. I feel like we've got, we've gotten a lot of these over the past two years for sure of like, accessibility building technology so it's always fun hey remember when i said it was a bad year for aviation uh did you say that yeah. oh here we go yeah it is. <laughs> what may be the u.s's first drone linked aircraft crash is being investigated i don't remember if we followed up on this one to see if it was uh truly a uh, drone linked aircraft crash but i i would assume so yeah because i remember they were there was some skepticism about like and we talked a little bit about this when we were looking at the article about how do you even identify whose drone it was but hopefully like we talked about X number of weeks ago, the standards may help over time. Oh, yeah. All right. So is there a connection between bad grammar and negative online reviews? So negative (laughs) online reviewers make a lot more errors than positive ones. Hey, look at that. A little trend data. It's nice. Hey, uh, two weeks on the show, we brought up a Reddit question about using using online forums. We Uh, did. Yeah, we did. So this is is one example. A Redditor complained about Tesla's Model 3 crash. And it prompts a safety change from Elon Musk. And I believe this was uh, if if it crashed, you couldn't open the uh, glove box. I'm pretty sure he like went to Twitter to dr- address this. Yeah. Too. This was a big deal at the time. Yeah. All right. So IBM and Unity teamed up to bring Watson's AI to VR and AR games. Yeah. That's uh, pretty cool. Too bad VR and AR still aren't very accessible. That's um, true. <laughs> but we're getting there. It'll hey. eventually. You remember when I said it's a great year for health algorithms? Did you say that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Google's AI can now predict heart disease just by scanning your eyes. That's so good. Crazy. I can't even understand. Oh, another accessibility technology winner here. So Microsoft's Cane Troller brings VR oh, to the visually impaired. Talk about accessibility in VR. That's the oh, way to I, go. I love that story. That was this year, too. I completely forgot about that. And Woodrow actually saw that at Kai. That's right, yeah. He, I think he even talked about it on the show. He did. And we were trying to remember where that happened or when that happened. Yeah. It's great. It was great. Uh, let's see here. Is this me? Yeah, Google's new AI algorithm. Oh, wait, no, I just did that. Where am I? Uh, Nokia. No, wait. Wait, no, this is you. What are you doing? <laughs> I skipped one, didn't I? No, uh, it's just did. in there twice. What is going on? I don't know. Anyway, it's in there twice. All right, That's your fine. turn. Anyway, so Storyline lets you build and publish Alexa skills without coding. Actually, I do believe there's an Alexa skill for Human Factors cast. Somewhere, yeah. But anyway, so now you can build your own skills for the smart speaker device, uh, and it's still pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Nokia made that smart jacket for first responders. Um, You know, that's cool. Epic. Oh, man, I forgot how much Microsoft killed it this year with the accessibility technologies. So they created Soundscape, which helped visual impaired people navigate cities. So this was kind of a cool iOS app that helped people get around with greater awareness using kind of like 3D spatial location auditorially. 
I'm pretty sure they also came out with the accessibility controller for the Xbox that year. Too. They did. Yeah. Because you, you showed me that, and I thought it was the coolest invention ever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we talk about that, too. Uh, hey, the next generation of spacesuits will be fitted with spatial technology to keep astronauts happy. Special technology. Um, and this we need is, those happy astronauts, Yeah, this man. is wearable sensors, basically, um, to make automatic adjustments in the environment in the suit, which was kind of cool. It's epic. All right, so this one I'm going to have to look a little bit more, but it looks like virtual reality improves offenders' empathy. This is if you were in a virtual environment, you would basically... You're more empathetic? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, I remember us calling bullshit on it. <laughs> yeah, I think we did. <laughs> but it's still, it's a, it was a cool concept, but maybe not executed properly. Yeah. Uh, humans slapped and shouted at a robot cars in two of six DMV crash reports this year. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, sometimes we just don't like robots. So RAD, R-A-D, is a new system to help visually impaired people play racing games. That's RAD. Yes, indeed. It actually is. Hey, we took a look at the spread of true and false news online. Um, yeah. This is one of my favorite stories of the year. And unfortunately, we didn't go to get to go to this unveiling. But Elon hey, Musk's hey, boring company to provi- prioritize pedestrians over cars. Hold up. So uh, we may have actually gone to this. We may have actually gone to this? Yeah. Is, the- it, is it potentially going to happen? It, it, it potentially might happen. So uh, it happens on the 17th. Um, and let's just say there's uh, another another host uh, that's on the show that uh, occasionally fills in that is potentially willing to play hooky with me to go up to this. So if Excellent. You're, if you're interested, Thank goodness. Um, we can we can make a day trip out of it and go go ride these things on the 17th. No, I'll leave that to you guys. Okay, well. Excellent. Hey, we're not recording early or anything. Check no, that out. No, we never do that. It is that. definitely the 24th today. Uh, happy <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Where are it? Uh, oh, my turn. Uh, yep. Touching the virtual. How Microsoft is making virtual reality tangible. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Oh, uh, man. They, they used a couple examples of uh, technology to basically touch virtual objects. Killer. All right. So Larry Page bringing on those flying taxis. So now exiting stealth mode. So it looked like in New Zealand they were trying to pilot test some of the first not only self-driving or self-flying, but they were electric planes as well. Yeah. Um, let's see here. A startup is pitching a mind uploading surface service that is 100% fatal. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this caught on, but... Uh, it's 100% fatal. How it, do we know? But is it 100% successful? I hope so. Because if it kills you, but it also uploads your mind, then that's you. So Maybe okay. they'll figure it out. All right, so researchers restore elusive sixth sense to lost limbs. So this is another one where we're using some kinesthetic sense and information to be able to give people a sense of where their limbs should be if they lost them previously. Yeah, hey, before we continue, I think we've made it through about a quarter of our news stories for the year. So let's just take a quick break, and we'll be back to break down the rest right after this. Human Factors Cast strives to bring you the best in Human Factors chatter every week. We pack news, interviews, reviews, and overall fun conversations into each and every product that we put our seal of approval on. But we can't do it without you. You see, the Human Factors Cast network is 100% listener supported. All the funds that go into running this show come from the listeners. That's why we're giving back to our supporters on Patreon now more than ever. Pledges start at just $1 per month and include rewards like 24-7 access to our exclusive Human Factors Cast Slack channel, personalized professional reviews, and Human Factors Cast Infinite, a Patreon-only podcast where the topic is human factors, etc. We're always updating our rewards, so stop by patreon.com slash humanfactorscast to see what support level may be right for you. Thank you all, and remember, it depends. And we're back with more news stories from the year. Uh, we're still in March, and this is pressing a button is more challenging than it appears. And I think this was a, uh, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, this was basically a new paradigm for what goes on in the mind when you're pressing a button. I think you're right, Nick. Yeah. Oh that man, was interesting. I remember this story really bummed me out back in back when we did it. So psychologists have a plan to fix broken science of psychology, and if I remember correctly, this was a lot having to do with, you know. The fact that we have some issues in some of the publishing in psychology, yeah. and trying to get some get some of the practices more well rounded, so that it wasn't so that it wasn't just like trying to reproduce papers or trying to meet deadlines, but to actually make sure that we're holding our integrity as scientists. Right, and this was I, I remember this had sort of a uh, 
the uh, emphasis on that that early approach where you basically state your hypothesis early and uh, state the types of analyses that you're going to do on it yeah. as kind of like a check on your own research, right? Like you can't fudge the data after it's already been collected. Yep, which is important in our line of work for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, next up we have uh, Y Combinator. Um Let's see here. 64 star startups that launched at Y Combinator's W18 demo. And I'm looking through this list here to see if there's any notable, um, notable uh, additions here. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I can't see anything. Anyway, yeah. That Autonomous happened. tractors. There you go. Hey, there we go. I'll keep looking. What's up next? But anyway, so Facebook stock falls after FTC push <laughs> launches probe <laughs> for data scandal. Stock briefly fell into a bear market territory Oof. before pairing losses. Yeah, I think that was the, the start of the fall. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's been a rough year for Facebook. Uh, hey. They're all right. Exploration of geometry and forces occurring within human to robot handovers. So Disney did this research of uh, basically this human-robot interaction, which was pretty cool because they were looking at how humans hand over these objects and how robots grab them. Yeah. I barely remember that story. Well, you, you recited it quite well. Oh, this is the... Oh, I love this one. Oh, yes. The tiny tooth-mounted sensor monitors nutrient intake in real time. I'm still trying to get one of these put in my mouth. Yeah, you know why I love this story? Yeah, I know why. Is because this, story. this is where my favorite sound bite of Blake comes uh, from. I think I just repeated it. I think you to did. To some degree. You're like... I will be the first in line to put this thing in my mouth I'll or something like that. I'll be the first one to put this in my mouth. I can't tell you how many times I played that around the office or shared it with our colleagues. Yeah. Oh, my so professional good. life is booming. Oh, I love this story. All right. Uh, the Internet of Things uh, and Consumer Product Hazards. Um, this was uh, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, or CS CPSC, uh, conducted a public hearing to receive information from all interested parties on, on the Internet of Things. So this was that... That, uh, like big, public forum of internet yeah, things. Yeah. Let me try and understand the nomenclature and what's going on in the world. It was kind of a big deal at the time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. New York City launching public security cyber tools to help residents from getting hacked. This was a really cool kind of like software as a service from a city's perspective on trying to tackle cybersecurity. Now, I think at the time we kind of got into them a little bit about like were the tools actually any good and was it really going to stop anything, but it was kind of one of the first instances of a city trying to take over cybersecurity. Hey, Microsoft killing it again. Uh, our first story of April. This is uh, Microsoft AI knowing when to politely interrupt conversations. Um, with potentially augmenting information or, or asking for follow-up questions, which is kind of cool to see. Now, Nick, if I remember this right, I don't remember this right, but I do remember the story. So computer system transcribes words that users are speaking sil silently. So this was from MIT when they were putting electrodes on somebody's face and actually using a jaw to pick up undetectable neuromuscular signals triple triggered by internal verbalization. So this was a mind-blowing one in and of itself. Right. This is yeah, like getting your internal monologue and creating words out of it. Right. This is basically that little apparatus that you put on your jawbone, and even the little mo movements that you make when you're thinking words, we're able to translate those thoughts into words without actually even opening your mouth, which is just crazy to me. Mind blowing. Uh, hey, there was a military funded study that uh, successfully tested prosthetic memory brain, brain implants. Um, Why? Well, where are those? Who did that? Is that DARPA? Where, where are those? I want those. Yeah, you and me both. So Microsoft object object detecting playmat brings toys to life. Oh, this was a really cool instance of this like Project Zanzibar. Yeah, so that it was actually neat. brought some toys to life for kids to play with using his tablet and a screen. Yeah, that was really neat. Um, where are we here? Uh, after millions of trials, these simulated humans learned to do perfect backflips and cartwheels. Uh, so this was a why is this in human factors? Um, it's a system learning how humans work. Yeah, basically, and then replicating the behaviors. Yeah. Oh, man, this was this was a tough one. Actually, this was a cool article to read. So Tesla was kicked off Fatal Crash Probe by NTSB. So I remember at the time, Elon Musk being really upset that they were going to take so long to do an actual you know review of a particular crash they had gone on. I know there's been a couple, but this was from a fatal accident. Um, and so they, they, I guess, had kind of voided their, um, their agreement with the NTSB. 
Yeah. Uh, wow, this one. I can't believe this happened. Uh, study finds over 3,300 3, 3, Android apps are inappropriately tracking kids. So this was actually collecting user data from children who did not consent to this data, uh, and they are an at-risk population because they're vulnerable. Um, Most so definitely, yeah. That was, yeah. Stay away from those Android phone kids. So UK government proposes five basic principles keep humans safe from AI. Now, this was an interesting one, but I think we, we kind of we toppled them over a little bit because they were very broad based assumptions yeah. about how we can protect ourselves from AI or keep ourselves safe. But it was a cool line of thinking and something that I think is going to be important over the next year. For sure. Uh, let's see here. Facebook, Microsoft and others sign anti cyber attack pledge. So this was cool to see kind of the tech giants come together to, uh, to band against this cyber attack. Right. And this came from a lot of the findings from the 2016 uh, election with the hacking from what are you, well, it's I don't know. It's funny to be the Facebook's at the forefront of that, and I think this is month before. <laughs> oh we yeah, start before to get the, the whole the insides of what was going on with Facebook. Yeah, uh, but still, nonetheless, good idea. Yeah. I, oh, I mean, it wasn't just Facebook and Microsoft. It was a lot of the other tech giants as well. Cloudflare. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, they're not assisting offensive government attacks, basically on uh, c- cyberly. They weren't having it. Yeah. All right. So Ford, yet again in the news, so launches an on-demand medical transportation service. So this was really geared at non-emergency medical needs to better, like, help people get to a doctor's appointment. So I thought this was a fun idea, especially for, like, aging populations or people who, you know, may be able not to get around to where they need to be. Right. That's cool. Uh, what's not cool is that this woman was killed and seven were hurt in the mid-air explosion of the engine incident. This is where we actually heard from the Southwest airlines jet pilot and we were like kind of stunned with how calm and cool she was collected she, like she was sitting there saying i think a uh, engine just blew up and and the air traffic control was like wait did you just say an engine blew up okay never mind this is what you're gonna do and like it, it was uh kind of crazy to hear yeah like it's one of those like in training kind of situations you never would have uh, guessed that would happen but they handled it pretty well yeah that show was just after my, uh, after april 18th so so go check that out if you're interested in hearing that audio next week on the 24th of april so we saw a touch sensitive wall that might let you control devices in your future home this was really really oh, cool because yeah. this was it was super like concepty at the time but they were just basically developing a smart wall where you could interact with all your smart devices in your house yeah that was neat uh Mozilla had Hubs, uh, which is a VR chat room for every headset and browser. I don't know if this ever took off, but it was a cool idea, and we tried it briefly. We did, didn't we? Yeah. Was that the one where you kind of look like a Lego person? Yeah, exactly that. Okay. Awesome stuff. So design and fabrication of a soft robotic hand and arm from Disney. Man, they put out so much like research-style papers this year in human-computer and human-robot inter- interaction. Yeah. And this would, I'm sure this will be used later as time goes on for like different robots and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, also from Disney, we had the Force Jacket, which is a pneumatically actuated jacket for embodied haptic experiences, um, which was basically uh, airbags that force, you know, for- put pressure on your body. So... It- over here in California, so we had Oakland pass the nation's strongest surveillance technology ordinance yet. So they had passed something to really truly regulate the or how surveillance devices are used in their city. Something that will play big time in smart cities as they pop over all over the country. So the IEEE Spectrum had an article over here about tech uh, watching you for digital symptoms of brain disorder. So this is, again, another algorithm for health, which was interesting. Um, taking a look at depression, Alzheimer's, and other syndromes, uh, leaving a mark on the way you type and talk. Wow. That's it. That's incredible. We've had a lot of great like medical stories yeah. this year, that's for sure. So tech watches your digital symptom. Oh, now nope. rereading Nick's for whatever reason. Why? So new stories, <laughs> <laughs> new studies measure screen-based media f- in use in children. Screen-based media are increasingly prevalent in children's lives and in our lives, beginning even when you're an infant these days with different aspects that may affect you potentially later on in life. So looking at how your development is affected and potentially how your health is too. So this is kind of contrasting to a story we had a couple of weeks ago now about using you know electronics and this kind of stuff to kind of help disorders like video games. Yeah, I was going to bring up Akili. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it's interesting. 
Uh, hey, the U.S. Army figured out how to do facial recognition in the dark. I kind of forgot about that one, and uh, it'll be interesting to see when that technology transfers over to the pir- private sector, because then everyone will be able to unlock their phones just by looking at it in the dark. That is awesome. Isn't that neat? Although I've, I haven't used facial recognition yet, but, but, you know, not until it'll order me a burger. Oh, yeah. All okay. right, so we covered a little bit about what was going on from Google that was announced at hashtag IO18 of day one. So I'm trying to see if there was anything really super awesome that came out of this. I, f- I want to say yeah. that there was there was something I was really excited about, but I'm afraid it was the, it's from last year. Was it no, the Babelfish? It was the uh, Babelfish. Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure that was in this one. Or maybe it was last year. I don't know. I feel like it's last year. Well, it might have been last year. But uh, some of the other things that came out of this are like uh, the uh, Pretty Please and then the actual Google Assistant that actually calls the places – and yeah. do, like the hair appointment example, and it and it was super realistic at the time. I remember. Yeah, and then I know they were that Google and Waymo are working together to try and tackle how we drive in self driving cars in bad weather, uh, and so that was an interesting concept. I don't know what's come of these like later on now that we're here. I mean, these all these have linked up articles, so if you want to check it out, always a good place to look. Always a good place to look. Uh, let's see here. Will automated vehicles take the stress out of driving? Research says don't count on it. So this was an article um, that t- took a look at automated vehicles and how it affects stress of drivers. Oh, man. So the FAA did San Diego a solid, and they made us the testing integration ground of drones in local airspace. Now, I wonder how that kind of has panned out and if we're going to be seeing more legislature over the next p- probably year and a half from San Diego specifically because we have a lot of aircraft going through our sector. Yeah, well, a couple of weeks ago we actually talked about the uh, the drone standards. We did, yeah. And so maybe they'll impact us here in San Diego quicker than other states. Yeah. Uh, Calm interfaces are here and they're wonderful is the title of this one. This one was by FASCO. Uh, and let's see here. What is uh, – I don't, I don't remember what FAST – I don't, know, I don't remember what calm interfaces were. Do you remember what they were? I think this was trying to, like, you... Let's see here. Oh. It's trying to get you to, like, calm down. This was actually um, evoking emotions through, like, this computer-based uh, uh, face. Oh, my goodness. The, the yes. texture um, changing from, like, spiky to soft, round... Uh, it was a weird thing. So it was just like multimodal ways of kind of interacting with you and kind of and projecting a feeling? Yes, I guess. Yikes. So what, feel what this robot feels through tactile expressions. So this is kind of a similar vein here where uh, this robot is using inflatable spikes and goosebumps to help the robot communicate with you about what it's trying to say. Yeah, uh, that might be the same thing. I'm not sure. It's pretty Um, close. Yeah. Uh, Hey, this there was it the, is. This was the year of Yanny Laurel. Oh, my goodness, it is. I forgot about Yanny Laurel. Yeah, I do, too. I don't even really know what it is right now. It's our, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember what I heard. I don't either. All I know is it was, it was gold. Ah, here we go. One of my favorite parts of the store of this year, another Microsoft banger. So the new Xbox controller was designed for accessibility leaks ahead of its reveal time. And I remember just being so excited that this was coming out. It was just another like accessibility mod that Microsoft had come up to come up with. And in this case, it was more geared towards video games versus just like accessibility of walking around. But it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. So you can plug like different uh, different control mechanisms into this central hub uh, and use like a foot pad for an input because you you know can't use your hands or fingers to to activate that button normally on a on a um, controller. And what came out later, like some of the videos, you had some pretty cool setups that you can get really creative with it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, could robots be counselors? Early research shows positive user experience. New research has shown for the first time that social robot can deliver a helpful and enjoyable motivational interview. Epic. That is a long-ass title. Wow. Um, yeah, but that was kind of cool to see that uh, these basically chatbots, if you will, were able to assist in um, these, uh, these tough-hitting topics. Which is good. I mean, I think it's important that we have stuff like that. And I think actually Facebook put out something like that for like suicide chat or something like that. Yeah. That effect. Oh, man. So this this was not such a great year. It was a cool year for legislation, but not such a great year for actual testing of self-driving Ooh, cars. Yeah. So self-driving cars at this point. So we're in May now of uh, 2018. And they, <laughs> the thoughts of, uh, of Americans, at least in the last six months of that time, had really plummeted about <laughs> self-driving cars. We were having a lot Way of problems down. from Uber to, you know, everybody else and Tesla as well having crashes. So it's it's uh, 
it's a tough time for science and self-driving cars. Yeah. Uh, hey, Google Trends. Uh, was <laughs> you were able to see what the world is searching for with Google Trends? I forgot about this. Um, but basically, what this was is that uh, Google Trends had new features, were simpler navigation to see stories from around the world from journalistic sources. I don't know. I, I haven't noticed a difference. I haven't either. But doesn't mean there isn't one. But Nick, I wonder if you noticed anything about this last story that's coming up here. So your worst election <laughs> nightmares are coming true. Was this the creepy laughing in the middle of the night? It's a, actually, I think it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go through like the little story. So what's the most terrifying thing you can imagine elect, uh, Amazon Echo doing? Oh, yeah. that's a, This is where they were recording the conversation and it sent it to somebody else. Yes. So it, it gives the idea of like you having a conversation between somebody you loved and then it getting sent to another ac- acquaintance. That one was, yeah. That doesn't seem fun. Pretty crazy. Um, <clears throat> so the HoloLens, uh, again, a killer year for Microsoft and accessibility. Uh, I don't know how many times we can say that, but it acts as eyes for blind users and guides them with audio prompts. Epic. So cool. HoloLens is really coming back with a vengeance, especially like this year, but we've talked about it at least for the last two years in multiple applications. So that's really cool to see. Yeah. All right. Also on June 4th, so researchers are training a robot butler to do the chores that you hate in a Sims-inspired virtual house. This seemed like a really fun one when we talked about it. I wonder how many people have really been able to train their butler to do the things they don't want to do. Oh, yeah. That w- I was just cool to see training AI in a virtual environment to, to basically be mapped to a physical environment once the, the technology is there. I just like the Sims. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, students confront the unethical side of designing for evil course. Ooh. Yeah. Terrifying. Oh, man. This was a big deal. And a couple weeks ago, we kind of dealt with the same idea, right? Uh Of, like, people being having their jobs replaced. So 50,000 Las Vegas workers are ready to go on strike after a fear of robots taking their jobs. And this was, like, in casinos, blackjack, that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it's a real question we're going to face definitely in 2019 and beyond. Like, what do we? What happens when automation starts replacing jobs? What do people do? That should be one of my predictions for 2019. We will see people protest autonomous vehicles taking their jobs. Yep. They took our jobs. <laughs> All right. Except so they really did. We are in June, um, so we will be wrapping up after this month. Uh, we got California will allow autonomous cars to pick up passengers. So these are the first trials of uh, autonomous vehicles picking up passengers. Uh, just companies couldn't charge for the rides. Gotcha. So Google, like the UK, has thrown out some AI principles, but these were more related to its use in weapons and against human rights violations. So this was Google taking a stand against using AI for anything kind of nefarious towards humans or harming people. This next one's pretty cool. Uh, the army unit will te- will be the first to test an exoskeleton that lightens combat load. And I don't know if this is the one that we saw at Ergo X. I but was going to ask that. Like, is this one of the ones we maybe kind of came across or yeah, a similar design? But it was certainly cool to see this and also to go to Ergo X this year. We were very fortunate enough to be able to attend that um, and, and kind of see the excitement around all these uh, exoskeletons. Powerful 2018. Yeah. So people recall information better through virtual reality. Now, I think you and I had some choice things to say about this one but it was an interesting concept where they're basically trying to make more immersive environments where in especially in places where you might not be able to get the experience like in the operating room right uh brooking survey finds 52 percent of people believe robots will perform most human activities in 30 years yes they took our jobs they took our jobs and now we just lay in beds So electronic skin allows users of prosthetic hand to feel pain. This was another awesome kind of prosthetic piece where it's really getting at kind of creating a brand new skin that allows somebody to either feel pain in specific places or feel sensations that they couldn't feel before. Yeah, super interesting to see uh, the advancements in prosthetics. Um, Let's see here. Uh, The FDA approves automated insulin delivery and monitoring system for use in younger pediatric patients. So this was cool because I, I, I seem to recall you and Elise talking about something like this at uh, Healthcare Symposium, or maybe I'm just crazy. No, you're right. We definitely did. I think we tackled something to deal with. Let's see here. Yeah, because there was a whole panel alone on just the design of these kind of devices and also that people were going through massive workarounds to create better devices that actually weren't FDA approved. Hmm. 
Interesting. All right. So we're, we, uh, we're almost tying up the end of June here with Mastering Reality with Project North Star from Motion Leap. So I'm not quite sure I remember this one, but it looks like the people at Motion Leap had a project called North Star that augmented reality to truly create a compelling platform for human computer action in interaction in AR. So most of AR's potential comes from dissolving human barriers between humans and computers, and Motion Leap was trying to do just that. So rounding out our uh, the first half of the year, June 30th, uh, California lawmakers passed bill stopping con- companies like Facebook from selling user data without consent. Uh, and I feel like this was uh, one of the most robust p- data privacy bills in the United States and kind of setting the, setting the way forward for how we tackle user privacy. Certainly, forward. yeah. I mean, I th- it's kind of odd to see this in retrospect, right? Because we've ha- right. we had so much going on with Facebook. We really did. Up until this point. And I'm not even sure if this was before or after we kind of hit the big bangs. But, yeah, I mean, California did some great lawmaking in terms of kind of trying to protect people privacy-wise. Net, net neutrality, too. Yep, that's yeah. true. We, that's not even come up yet, has no, it? That, no, that hasn't. But, yeah, it, it should. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's going to round out the first half of 2018. We'll be back next week to finish our coverage of all the news stories of 2018, including our predictions for 2019. Ooh. So that will be exciting. Uh, let us know what you guys think of the stories of the first half of the year. Uh, you know, you can join us on our Slack and let us know over there. Uh, if you want to hear more and support the show, you can always leave us a review on your podcast medium of choice or consider supporting us on Patreon. You know, we bring these things to you ad free. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, happy holidays to you all. And of course, you can always reach us at our home on the web, humanfactorscast.com. I want to thank my co-host, Mr. Blake Arnsdorf, for being on the show with me today. Where can our listeners go and find you if they want to talk about any news story from the first half of 2018? Oh, you guys, you can find me on Twitter at Don't Panic you X and have a wonderful holiday. Special thanks to Mr. Jeff Olson for editing our video this week and every week. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me across social media at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time, it depends. It does indeed. It depends. Sorry.